You want to say good morning? Hi. How's everybody doing? Good. <laughs> you said you're doing good? I'm doing good. You're doing good. Good. How'd you sleep last night? Good. There you go. Rocking some uh, Mario. Oh, hey, what you got in your hand? That's some big news. Say what? What'd you get that for? The tooth fairy. What happened? My tooth came. My tooth came out whenever it was my bedtime. Yep. Walked out with blood coming out of his mouth. Blood of bloody hands. Bloody hands holding a tooth. That was. Uh, let me see what you got. Where's it at? Yeah, you got a big hole in your mouth now. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. You got two dollars to get you a new one, right? Yeah. There you go. All right. Here, just it's <laughs> not let's not move around. We can wave. We can wave in a minute. All right. That way it doesn't shake him too bad. Go. Get ready to shaking up. Hope y'all doing well. Strawns, Nixons, Hess. Coopers, Sadowskis, there's Miss Beverly. Myers, Pastor Tony. I can't wait to go to Owens. Oh, are you going to Owens today? No, I'm going to go to Owens on Monday. Oh, Monday. And nice. I'm going to play Mario. You already got a play date set up, huh? Uh-huh. You ready? Uh -huh. ready to do it, huh? Yeah. It's going to be fun. Well, um, do you want to pray this morning? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and pray for us? Dear Jesus, thanks for food. Please help us have a wonderful day today. And just help us have a great time. Amen. 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 Are you going to hang with me? Yeah. All right. We're going to read Acts 17, 24. A couple of verses right here. Paul is... Uh, are you going to read like the whole thing or are we doing over here? Uh, just a little bit over here. Sound good? <laughs> He's talking to a bunch of philosophers. Those are people that like to think and, and talk about everything they think about. So he's talking to all these philosophers and, um, you know, we've kind of been talking about foundational things. And uh, God reminded me of this passage because really this is uh, a great passage where Paul just kind of lays out to these Greeks, these non-believers who um, have made idols for everything. And he, he sees one, it says, um, on the altar, it was written to an unknown God. He says, therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. Verse 24, Acts 17, the God who made the world and all things in it, since he's the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything or human fish faces. It's you, Paul, man. Mm -hmm. Since he himself day. gives to all people life and breath and all things, and he made from one man every nation and mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they would seek God. Um, so I want to just kind of give you a few foundational things. Um, and hopefully these are things that you can... Um, number one, as a believer, rest in. But then number two, teach your kids, teach your grandkids. Um, Give me more likes. <laughs> these are things that really will affect everything you do in life. Uh, as a, Whoa, yeah, you got to be careful, buddy. Um, as a fixed point, of, like the, these truths become what the foundation of our lives are. So they become our fixed point of reference. Everything moves from these truths uh, found here in Acts 17. And I just want to run through these really quick and give these to you. All right, I got my little frog man here. Um, I love flies. So let, me, uh, so let me read these to you. Here's the first one. Verse 24. The God who made the world and all things in it. So, so first, that's it right there. God, uh, I mean, Judah, who made you? God. Yeah, what else did God make? All things. And God made all things, right? I mean, because it says it right here, Acts 17, 24, God made the world and all things. So God is the origin of all things. Well, He's the creator. The uh, we can do it today. 
but he, he made all things. Um, and, and, and for, for us as believers, this is huge. I mean, think about, um, how much of the world's, uh, philosophies, their worldview, their, uh, beliefs comes from the fact that, um, God is not the creator, that Genesis one didn't happen. Um, and, and so as believers, this is, this is one of the most foundational truths is that God, everything came from God. He made all things, um, and there's a reason why he made all things. And then the very next verse, since he's the Lord of heaven and earth. Um, so that right there tells us that not only is he the, the origin, the creator of all things, but he's the moral authority over all things. Uh, and this is great news for us as parents because now it does not depend on uh, what I say, right? Because we've all had that question from our kids, um, you know, says who or, or, or who says or how come? Why do I have to do this? And a lot of times I'll send one kid to tell another kid, hey, tell them it's time for dinner to come downstairs or to clean the room or go brush your teeth or whatever it is. And if it's just based on their authority of a sibling as a sibling, they're not going to listen. You know, you can't tell me what to do. Um, you're, not my, you're not my boss. Well, now it's not if they tell them, hey, dad said or mom said it's time for dinner or it's time to brush your teeth or put that away or whatever it is. Well, now there's some authority. Now there's uh, some, some, you know, teeth to that uh, request, right, that they made. Well, uh, as parents, wh where does our authority come from? Well, it comes from God's authority. And God is the Lord of heaven and earth. He's, he's over all things. He gets to decide, therefore, what's good, what's not good. Uh, because he's the Lord. He's over it all. He's the one who uh, sets the standard as the Lord of heaven and earth. And, and that's a foundation stone for us as believers, that God made all things, but then also he's an authority over all things. Uh, and so when we think about what is good and what is right and wrong, uh, we think about it in context of this book and what God has told us because he's the Lord of heaven and earth. And then I love the rest of this. Does He does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. So God, here's the third thing, third truth is that God is He's self-existing and self-sustaining. He doesn't need us uh, to sustain him, to create him. Uh, God was God. For eternity before we were here, he'll be God for eternity after we die. Um, and, and so he's in heaven, not needing, this sets him apart from every other God, everything that's worshipped. He doesn't. He's not served by human hands as though he needs anything. He's the one who gives to everybody life and breath and all things. So he's the origin of all things. He's the, the Lord, the moral authority. And then he's the the one who uh, is self-sustaining, self-existent. He doesn't need anything. But then he says, verse 26, this is where it gets good uh, for us as believers and really for all people. It says, he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. This is why we as believers value human life. We believe God made every person, uh, and he determined their life. He determined where they would live. He determined uh, when they would live. Uh, we don't believe as Christians in accidents. We don't believe in mistakes uh, because we believe God is sovereign, and, and when he makes somebody, he makes them with a plan. And so this is something that determines how we live, how we treat people, how we value people, how we value our own lives this foundational stone um, that God, he knew where you would live. He knew where you would grow up, when you would grow up, what point in time. He knew uh, the day and age that we're living in right now. He's the one who, who set us there and we're there for a reason. Verse 27 tells us that they would seek God. If perhaps they might groan for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and exist as even... Some of our own poets have said, for we also, for we also are his children. Um, and, and so the reason God is the creator of the universe, the, the moral authority, the self-sustaining 
um, self-existing God who, who made us all with a purpose. The purpose is that we would seek him. Um, but Paul lays all this out and builds on top of one foundation after the other of God who is uh, our fixed point of reference as believers. In other words, he's the thing that everything in our life moves out from. So it all goes back to this, this fixed point of reference that's um, it's outside of ourselves. It doesn't change. It doesn't move with us. It's something, someone. It's God who uh, is existent in and of himself. And so, look, today I just want to encourage you with that truth um, and, and want to challenge you as a family, parents, an individual with your friends. Man, talk about that this weekend. Spend some time uh, seeking God praising him, um, meditate on this passage that, that he made you, that he um, puts you where he puts you, that uh, you would seek God. And, and then talk about the implications of what this means compared to what the world says, uh, that, that you know you evolved, that you were uh, an accident, that you were a mistake, and, and, and really truth is relative. It doesn't matter what you believe. I have my belief, you have your belief. Uh, these are some, you know, we've been talking about doctrine a little bit and foundational things, and I want to continue to unpack some foundations for us. Um, hopefully that we would pass these on to our kids, that we would pass these on to our, our friends and, and neighbors, but most, most of all, these things um, show us how to live, and we live in light of these truths. And so, uh, so I just want to challenge you this weekend as you go to church, whether it's in person or online, um, I hope you'll be able to make it somewhere that, uh, that, that you would kind of, let's, let's go back to the basics. What, what are those things that are foundational to our faith and how does that affect our faith? How does that, uh, change the way we live and, um, and, and affect and, and really control everything knowing that God is on the throne. He made all things. He's self-existing. He, uh, he determined our, our time where we live, uh, and in Him we live and move and have our being. And so I just encourage you to rest in that. Uh, man, talk to your kids about the fact that where they come from, and let that be a comfort, a, a sense of security that, man, we came from God. He sustains us, uh, and so we don't have to to freak out, to worry when things around us are uh, uncertain, when things around us are unsettling, and changing and all these different things that are happening right now in our country um, with corona and with with all the tensions that are happening and the political season we're in there's a lot of angst but but this is a great passage to help us to just rest in who god is and his plan for us so i hope that encourages you a little bit as you go into your weekend hope you have a great weekend um, go to church whether it's online or in person uh, worship as a family, grab some other families, worship together. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do church at your house, man, invite a neighbor over or uh, somebody else that y'all can uh, sit as a family with your kids, with your spouse, uh, with some friends, and and be the body of Christ, be the church this weekend. So, love you guys. If y'all need anything, any prayer requests, let us know.